Is golf just too expensive in 2021? Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. First things first, I'd like to warmly welcome you all to the channel. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel if you're not new to the channel, but guys, if you are new to this YouTube channel, please take two seconds, hit that subscribe button below. It'll help me out because it'll grow the channel. It'll help you out because you won't miss any of the great golf related content that I bring to you guys every single day. Today we're talking money and golf. You see, because recently I've been testing quite a lot of golf clubs as I always do. I've been testing more budget ones, and it's been fun. Oh yes. Oh yes. Cheap golf for everyone. That was wonderful. And you see, I wanted to do this video because I don't just want to talk about cheap golf clubs, cheap golf balls. I'm doing loads of videos on them, and I'm finding that, yes, they might not perform as well as your bigger brands, but the enjoyment level for me has been sky high. And I said in a video the other day, I love golf, like love it. In fact, probably a bit too much. So guys, rather randomly, you join me at um, Hadrian's Wall. I told you it was random, didn't I? There is a big excuse and a big reason for that. And I will get round to that. But guys, today's video is a sponsored video and is sponsored by the guys at Golf King. It's just like everyone in lockdown, I played quite a lot of golf on my mobile phone, on my Xbox, on my PlayStation, on my laptop. One of those games was Golf King. Now, Golf King have kindly sponsored this video, guys, so make sure you do check out the link in the description below and use the coupon code REALGOLFKING. Capital letters don't matter, no spaces, Real Golf King. You'll get rewarded an Elite Pack 1EA 5,000 coins, which sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Guys, having played the Golf King myself, I know that you can make some outstanding shots with your various drivers, woods, long irons, short irons, wedges, rough irons, I know, a rough iron, sand wedges, and putters. Compete against our golfers from all around the world to claim the title of Golf King and play with your friends and family. So remember guys, if you want to get an elite pack of 5,000 coins, use the code REALGOLFKING and that is available till the 31st of July. Now let's get back to the golf course and let's talk about how golf is potentially too expensive and how I can do a full day at Hadrian's Wall for just four pounds parking. Then we'll come back because I've got some more things I want to say and I'll tell you exactly why we're filming part of this video at Hadrian's Wall. And I can see the comments now, James, you're a massive hypocrite because you love playing golf at great golf courses. You use the best possible clubs you can use and they're sometimes very expensive. And yeah, I, I absolutely, you're correct, that's right. But if you want to play golf and you haven't got the budget to buy tailor-made golf clubs, Titleist golf clubs, Honma golf clubs, PXG, and you can't be a member at Wentworth, at Harbour Town, at, at Augusta, let's be fair we've gone high end there haven't we i know but also some of the most fun i've ever had playing golf has been when i've been testing budget golf clubs when i've been playing the cheapest golf course on golf now with gary that was such a great video it didn't cost a lot of money it was, I think it was a 10 pound green fee for 18 holes around a very good golf course so there are bargains out there there are deals out there even down to lessons and tuition and things like that if you can get into a group lesson if you can get 212 to the par five. If you can get a young aspiring golf teacher who's looking for clients to prove that he can teach and that he's a really good coach and that he's trying to build the portfolio of people who've improved the golf so that he can then show people and eventually build his career and charge more, that happens. There is opportunity out there for good price golf, but, oh, I've hit that good, where's it gone? Oh, that went a long way left. Any pros out there for lessons? But what kind of sparked this video as well isn't just testing cheap equipment. But I was at a golf club the other day and I'm not gonna mention which one it was and the pro said, you know what? It's time we all put the prices up. It's time green fees went up, lessons went up. Golf clubs were already going up because of, I don't know, inflation, I don't know. And we had a little bit of a, not an argument, but a debate and I said, no, 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 no. No, we need to keep it at a level which is good for the clubs to bring in the revenue so that the clubs can survive and thrive and prosper and make changes and make the courses better. But then also we need to remember that only a couple of years ago golf was seen as a massive elitist sport 
and we're doing really well to get away from that so let's not go back because I think one thing which golf has which not many other sports have is it's that diverse it's that open to all that that's what we have going for us you have budget golf courses cheap golf courses council run golf courses public run golf courses high-end private courses for people who want to go and play those courses and this video isn't me saying don't go and play expensive golf don't go and buy expensive golf balls because when the world reopens I want to travel I want to go and play the courses that are on my bucket list I want to use the golf clubs that help me perform my best as a PGA professional but I also want to be able to go and play with my mates who are just starting down the local course for a tenner and think that they're not thinking oh I'm not going out with James again it costs a fortune it's like that's what a terrible shot that was when I mean, we flag high but um not sure that birdie's gonna be overly easy now and you see I guess for me I really want to be a part of a sport that is inclusive a sport that includes people who don't make a ton of money that don't feel like they have to throw a thousand pound a year at a golf membership but want to go out with their friends with some sticks and some balls and hit them around a the field and have a laugh enjoyment very quickly turning to a rant so I'm going to pick up the note a little bit and say that how much I'm enjoying using these cheaper golf clubs as well I've done a review on these recently and Tom Gilchrist won them so Tom this afternoon I will be on the way to the post office to post these to you right flopper just sit just sit not bad but not great we're only going to take the wedge because does anyone else find that when you don't take a putter you hole more I don't know if that's just me from being a kid but Generally, if I don't take a putter, I feel like I might concentrate a little bit more on the chip. But guys, please do get in the comments and let me know what you think. Is golf too expensive? Are we doing a good job of including everyone? Oh, definitely should have brought the putter. Aggressive. Right, okay, that's a bogey, but it's fine because I'm enjoying myself. And now I've got kind of most of the negatives out of the way in this video as well. I, I wish I would have started, if I did this video again, I'd start with what I'm going to say now. There's so many good golf courses that are cheap. There's so many good special offers on on golf now. And for me, there's never been more options to play affordable golf. And I think that that it really is hats off to some of the grassroots foundations here in the UK that do help kind of set up local golf courses. I think it's a big tip of the cap to companies like Cali, whose clubs I'm using today because I've just done the video on them, even down to local schools and local colleges. So when I was teaching full time a couple of years ago, when I was an assistant professional, I was lucky enough to go into the school that I went to as a kid, well, the secondary school, so as a young adult, and teach them through year seven to year 11. And it was absolutely fantastic. It was so, so good. And that was, I obviously got paid for that because it was my job, but it was from a grant from So guys, a little explanation as to why, first of all, a part of this video was filmed at Hadrian's Wall and why this video is filmed here at um, Hadrian's Wall. Laura, why are we at Hadrian's Wall? To show everybody what beautiful sights the UK has got to offer. What more do you want? What more do you want? And how much does it cost us to come to Hadrian's Wall today? A massive £4. Four pounds to see a historic... Exactly. It depends if you buy popcorn, chocolate and all the rest of I must admit, shop. this, um, there's a... Uh, yeah, so it probably cost about more like twenty pounds. But the fact is, throw that in sheep. Uh, but the fact is, we could have done this today for four pounds. And this is where, for me, the argument of golf getting too expensive. Another video so far, I've been quite negative on the elements of golf that can be expensive. And guys, the real reason why I'm filming the second part of this video here is because, as you heard, um, the microphone stopped working on me. So I'm going to try and recreate the points while showing the amazing golf shots that I played and one of the points which I got cut off on is that I used to work at a secondary school that I used to actually go to and I used to teach golf in PE lessons which was absolutely fantastic and that was all funded through I think it was either the guys at Golf England or Sport England or the Golf Foundation and I think that's something which I hope still going on I've not been doing it for quite a while because I haven't been coaching full-time for quite a while and for me if we can get young people into it for free 
It's then about bridging the gap of... Did you play golf in P when you were at school? No. Signed it. Exactly, but that's why I was really happy to, yeah. to do it. But um, for me, once we get people playing golf, practicing golf in school PE, it's then bridging the gap of, right, you've been on the playing grounds, you've been playing golf on the football field. You can imagine the kind of apparatus you used to have to take, soft golf balls, soft golf clubs, flags, all the rest. Do you reckon it's down there? I think it's down, I don't know. Okay. Soft golf clubs, soft golf balls, flags, all the rest. But then it's about bridging the gap of playing on the sports field to get into a local golf course, to a local golf club. And that's what that's what a lot of people struggle with because even when I was growing up playing, golf was still quite expensive. You couldn't get a really cheap membership. You couldn't get really, really, really cheap golf clubs. But then also for me, one of the big things is you look at sport in England, in the UK. When I was at school, the number one sport in England was fishing. Fishing. I mean, I don't mind fishing. I've only done it a couple of times, but then it was cycling. And you start to think, right, so fishing, cycling, and what do all these sports have in common? Generally, once you've bought one piece of kit, one fishing rod, one bike, you're generally there or thereabouts. And I was talking to, to one of my good friends who's a manager at a gym, Liam, who's been on the channel quite a lot. Not Liam, Liam, other Liam. There's loads of Liams. But he was saying that that's what gyms struggle with as well. They struggle with people paying out monthly because they start to get a little bit bored. They start to think, well, I've got to pay again. I've got to pay again. I've got to pay again. And golf's very much like that. You've got to refill golf balls. You've got to buy tees. You've probably got to have lessons. You've got to pay different green fees for different courses to get different experiences. On a bike, you just jump on. You can go on different roads. Uh, fishing, you can go and try and catch different fish. You can go on different lakes. By the time we saw some more golf shots, I think, actually. Wonderful. So guys, in fairness, I know the mic cut out and I've got no idea when it cut out, but um, I was rushing here to get out of the greenkeeper's way. What a morning. Really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the chat about golf and money. Guys, get in the comments below. Do you agree? Do we need to make it more... And so guys, as you can see, the golf... Although the golf wasn't a priority in this video, it wasn't that good. But get in the comments below and let me know, do you think we're doing it enough? Are we doing enough to make golf inclusive enough? Is it cheap enough? I think we're certainly on the right lines now. I'd love to see more young people get into golf. I'd also love to see more middle-aged people get into golf. People that have finished playing football, finished playing rugby, finished playing cricket, and then want a stepping stone into what I think is our great game, our wonderful game. There's so many people who I've taught in the past who said, James, I would never have dreamed of playing golf when I was 30, 40, even 50, because it was just too expensive. I couldn't afford memberships. I couldn't afford all the high-end stuff. But now, now I can use golf pass. I can use get into golf and I can buy cheap golf clubs and it's actually working. So I think I've covered all the points I wanted to there. Obviously really annoyed that the microphone let me down on the video, but we've done our best. I think it's quite fitting that we are somewhere here like Hadrian's Wall, a heritage site here in England where we can come pay £4 for parking and have a great day out so you can do it cheap. And I think maybe we can learn from that in golf as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed that. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't done already. Huge thanks to the guys at Golf King for sponsoring this video. Without sponsors like that, I wouldn't be able to do the daily golf related content that I do and that a lot of you guys really enjoy. And apart from that guys, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.